over the last month, I have uploaded two videos about network radios, such as this. And in those videos, I tried my very best to explain the pros and cons over this type of a radio versus a regular old-fashioned radio, such as this UV-5R. And in both of those videos, I went out of my way to try and explain in a way that even some people would understand that these are interweb radios and they will not work without a connection to the interweb. And I tried to explain that this type of radio is not the best choice for emergency use or a shit hit the fan type situation. And the reason that I put so much time and effort into trying to explain these things clearly in both of those videos was to prevent some people from leaving stupid comments explaining to everyone why a interweb or network type radio was not the best choice for them. And yet, despite my valiant efforts, some people still proceeded to leave comments trying to convince us all of how smart they think they are by decreeing that this type of radio, a network radio, is worthless and that nobody should ever buy one. Some people even went so far as to proclaim that a network radio is not a real radio. So in this video, I will explain right here on camera again and in, in even greater detail the differences between this type of radio and this type of radio. And I will try to explain even harder so that some people will be able to understand it. But first of all, allow me to say just one word. Moist. This is my interweb radio. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Sometimes this type of radio is referred to as a POC radio, but most people just call them interweb radios. And allow me to be clear right up front, this type of radio is a radio. Because in order for your voice to get from your face hole to your friend's head holes listening on his internet radio, your voice, even though it is first encoded into tiny routable digital packets, those tiny routable digital packets must still be transmitted out of this antenna via RF electricities through the firmament and out to your Wi-Fi box or hotspot or whatever you're using for interweb connectivity. So any expert claiming that this radio is not a radio is an idiot and should be ignored. Now, do internet radios work the same way that regular old-fashioned radios work? No. A traditional old-fashioned radio, such as this Bufwang UV5R, which, by the way, is known by licensed ham radio operators around the globe, is the best quality ham radio you can buy. This type of radio works using old-fashioned radio technology invented by Thomas Edison over 200 years ago. This type of radio transmorgifies the noise that comes out of your face hole into radio waves that then ooze out of the antenna and fly through the firmament. Those waves are then sucked in by a similar radio they get detransmorgified and then come out as the noise for your head holes. That makes this type of radio very reliable for communicating with someone because all you need for your friend to hear your muted grunts of passion are two functioning radios within range of each other set to the same channel or frequency. So there are not a lot of things to go wrong and prevent you from talking to each other. An internet radio, however, works very differently. When you yell into your internet radio, your voice is transmutilated into a series of routable digital packets. 
which are then transmitted out of the antenna using the exact same old-fashioned technology as the Boofwang. However, instead of transmitting those digital packets directly to your friend's radio, it transmits them either to a Wi-Fi router or a cellular type network connection. A technology which, by the way, was invented by Steve Jobs in 1962. Those digital packets of your voice are then routed through the interweb, eventually making their way to your friend's network radio, where all of those digital packets are then reassembled and then regurgitated out through the speaker and landing in your friend's head holes. So for your friend to hear you using his or her network radio, you must both have correctly configured radios, a reliable connection to the interweb, and in some cases, your radio must also be signed into a third party or central service, such as Zello. And all of this extra complication is why, in most cases, a standard old fashioned radio is more reliable, especially in an emergency or in a shit hit the fan type situation. Because with a regular old fashioned radio, there are less things to go wrong and prevent you from talking to your friend. Or, as the experts would say, there are fewer points of failure. Because, as we all know, in times of shit hitting the fan, that additional interweb infrastructure required for a network radio may be offline or unavailable, either because there is no power to run your Wi Fi routers, or because an overreaching government decides to illegally use its emergency powers to shut down communication amongst its citizens. However, when using a regular old-fashioned type radio, even though it may have fewer points of failure, you do have to be within range of the other radio you wish to talk with, which, depending on many factors, that range may not be very many FARs. Whereas, with the network radio, being in range of whoever you are trying to talk to is not really an issue. It does not matter if your friend is across the street or around the globe. Because with a network radio, you are not constrained by the surly bonds of distance. So my friend, in summary, a network radio is a radio and a network radio has many useful uses. And many people prefer and enjoy using this type of a radio. However, for many people and in many situations, a regular old fashioned radio may be a better choice for your radio lifestyle. But if you want to call yourself a true radio dork, Obviously, you need both.